Um, we are on the unceded, uh, unsurrendered territory of Ashnabi Nation. Uh, and before we begin with today's uh, today's meeting, we'll do a quick roll call. We have received regrets from Councillor Dudas. Uh, Chris, can you uh, do a quick roll call for us, please? Certainly, Chair. Councillor Luloff. I am present. Councillor El Shantiri. Present. Councillor Deans. Here. Conseil Fleury. Bonjour. Councillor Menard. Hello. Councillor Kitts. Here. Councillor DeRuz. Here. Councillor Hubley. Here. And Vice Chair Leeper. Good morning. You have quorum, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you very much, Chris. And uh, it's a pretty short agenda today. This may be a world record, but we will see. Uh, so confirmation of minutes uh, 28, uh, Wednesday, the 6th of April, 2022. Are they confirmed? Received. Carried. Carried. Carry. Thank you. Carry. Uh, we Item number one is the always stop control at, at uh, five intersections in Ward 12. I've spoken with the councillor. Uh, um, we did have a delegation, unfortunately, that wasn't able to make it, that was in favor. We do actually have correspondence all in favor that are saved within the drive. Uh, if there's no need to uh, hold this item, is this item carried? Carried. 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 Terrific. Thank you. Uh, item number two, uh, we had a notice of motion that was previously served, moving to sustainable care of our public spaces, right of way, front yard beautification. Uh, now, Councillor Dudas said originally did move this, um, uh, uh, un is unable to attend today, but Councillor King, I'm sure would like to speak to it. Um, and we do have two delegations, unless the delegations feel if this carries that there's no need to speak today. And maybe Chris, do you happen to see the delegations in the room? I do, Chair. Um, one of them has been promoted to panelist, and the other Perfect. one needs to accept the prompt. Wonderful. And they're both, they, they should both be in now. Ah, wonderful. So first up on deck, uh, we got uh, Raywin. Uh, if this uh, carries, do you wish to speak and present today? Or uh, I'll leave it up to you. Um, if it carries, that's okay. Okay, terrific. And I'll ask the second delegation. Uh, 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 Brian, do I see? Oh, great. Hello. Uh, do you feel the need to speak today if this, uh, if this item carries? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. So on that, we will hold the item. So this is the only item. I'll just double check on the agenda. And I do believe, uh, uh, let's go through this real quickly here. Yep. So that, so I guess we're on to item number two. Uh, so the first up uh, would be, but uh, be uh, Raywin. Raywin, uh, you have five minutes. Uh, if you wish to uh, do your presentation, I, I believe there was some speaking notes that we do have saved locally on our drive from you, uh, but uh, you do have five minutes and the floor is yours. Thank you. So my name's Raywin Kosler. I'm a resident of Ottawa and I'm speaking as a representative of For Our Kids, Ottawa Gatineau. We're a group of parents concerned with the effects of climate change on our children's futures. We're speaking in support of Councillor Dudas's motion to review the Use and Care Bylaw 2003-498 which currently does not permit work or changes to the city's right-of-way areas. This is city land which fronts people's properties or lies between the sidewalk and street, as in the case of a boulevard garden. As you are aware, the City of Ottawa is working toward bold targets to meet our municipal climate change objectives. In order to do this, we must update the bylaws and policies that do not align with or encourage these goals being met. Gardens on the right of way would mitigate climate change and an update to the bylaw would be a small step toward the city taking concrete actions towards its climate change master plan goals. We believe the bylaw in question is old and outdated and no longer addresses the current challenges of the climate and biodiversity crisis. The habit of encouraging turf grass on so much of city land is a poor use of the land, leading to runoff, poor soil, and an ecologically impoverished monoculture, which provides no value in terms of water management or for our struggling insect and pollinate, uh, pollinator populations. Canada-wide, there's a movement to stop using turf grass on right-of-way areas and to replace it with locally appropriate plants and gardens. Municipalities such as Mississauga, Toronto, Guelph, Vancouver, Kitchener and Halifax have already adopted active boulevard garden programs with great success. 
This has been done before and we're asking that Ottawa follow suit. These cities offer recommended plant lists and have regulations around plant heights to preserve sight lines and address safety issues. This type of garden involves soft scaping only, meaning just plants. Residential gardening on boulevards would create habitat and provide food sources for pollinators, at-risk bumblebees, butterflies and songbirds, thus protecting biodiversity. Habitat corridors are essential for many of Ontario's 400 native bee species. We rely on pollinators for one in three bites of the food we eat, and many of them are in crisis. Right-of-way gardens improve water retention and filtration, thus helping to prevent neighbourhood and downstream flooding and contamination of lo local waterways. They act as carbon sequestration tools as the deeper roots of native plants absorb significantly more carbon than grass. They reduce dependence on fossil fuels used for maintaining turf grass with gas powered mowers and trimmers and reduce the need for fertilizers with their high carbon footprint. They increase equity to access green space and gardening for some of our under-resourced communities in Ottawa. They enhance community ties and beautify our neighborhoods. They also create more cooling for the city as temperatures climb due to climate change, increases in hardscaping and urban development. Using the boulevard and right-of-way areas for gardens is a very simple and effective change to allow in terms of climate change mitigation. Right now, city resources are being used inefficiently as bylaw officers must visit any such garden which has received even one complaint. It's simply a waste of city money and time. Allowing these gardens would be an opportunity for education and also to create clarity and consistency for residents and organizations who wish to take steps to address the urgent climate and biodiversity crisis and to contribute to the beautification and naturalization of Ottawa. People who would take advantage of this opportunity are people who care about the environment, who care about the beauty of the city and preserving it for our future generations. Allowing this bylaw to be changed would be a win for everyone, the city, the residents, our children, and the climate. Thank you for your time. Great, uh, thank you for your delegation today. We do have questions to delegations only at this point. So uh, first up, uh, Councillor Deans. Yeah, thank you, and thank you very much for your presentation. And uh, I certainly agree with you that uh, beautification in our boulevards is a great idea. Um, I've been um, suggesting that to city staff for a number of years and sent them some photographs from Oakville and other places that have beautiful uh, sponsored boulevards by um, um, different companies that operate in those municipalities that take on the boulevard planting and uh, it really beautifies the city and I think it, as you rightly point out it's great for the environment so uh, I would love to see a program like that get underway in Ottawa. I think the more um, problematic one just in my very limited experience is the right of way in front of people's homes. Um, and uh, I, I, I agree with you and I agree with the point that allowing uh, residents to to landscape and beautify those areas makes a lot of sense. Uh, it also, I found out, conflicts with our winter operations. And uh, I had one um, one family that had a lot of their very expensive landscape taken out by a plow. So I guess um, I wondered if you wanted to comment on that and then I will follow up with city staff to ask them um, um, their feeling on, on how we might address this issue. Well, um, the, the city itself actually offers free trees to, pe for, to people to plant on these city owned areas. Um, so the city itself is already, there's a program called, I can't remember the name of it, something for trees but people are already getting city trees planted in these uh, right-of-way areas at the front of their gardens. And what we're suggesting is, is um, you know, if you have a list of recommended plants, um, for example, perennials, there's not gonna be any interference with the plow. Like in winter, these things just die down. We're not suggesting um, rocks or anything, like th there would be a regulated list of, of approved um, plants that would simply not interfere with uh, winter operations. I mean, I have, a, I have a garden that goes right down to my, I'm on a laneway in New Edinburgh, 
my garden goes right down to the, the road because we have no curb, we have no sidewalk. But this, the plow, it, it just goes through, it, the snow just piles on these plants that are only about this high by winter. So that, that's the kind of thing we're suggesting. Um, we're not, and also, you know, people would need to be aware that if the city does need to um, do work or dig or do anything like that, that that's the deal. Yeah, they really shouldn't be, um, that would be part of the education that this is city land and that if there's, you know, if there's a need to dig or so on, you, you really should just be prepared for that. So I think this is working in other municipalities uh, like Mississauga and so on that also have a lot of snow in Guelph. Um, in Guelph, they even, the city offers garden plans, like suggested plans for the boulevards and the right of way. So um, I think we can, you know, we can work with this. But people shouldn't be investing hundreds of dollars of hardscaping. That is not what we're talking about. Yeah, I, I, I understand the point and I like the point. I also know every spring how many calls I get from people who want their grass reinstated because of plows. And so I am, you know, interested to hear what the uh, city staff think. I, I mean, I agree with you. I'm, I'm willing to support this and take a look at it. But I do think that it's probably... Um, more problematic for the city um, because people will they will put rock gardens and everything else and they'll hardscape and then um, they they will make a claim against the city. So I, I'd like to hear what the city staff have to say, Mr. Chair. Should we ask them to do that now, or do you want to wait till after questions to the delegation? Yeah, I think we'll wait till after questions, Councillor Teams. Thank you very much, though, and great question. Uh, I think we're all thinking the same as councillors. Uh, Councillor King. Uh, thank you, Chair, and I'd really like to uh, thank uh, Raywin for uh, her advocacy, actually uh, bringing this to, to my office and uh, working uh, with uh, our staff so that we could work uh, with city staff and also Councillor Dudas to uh, really see this uh, motion come to fruition. So I really want to thank you for the advocacy. And I was just curious, um, you did uh, describe uh, the challenges around city uh, resources being allocated, especially by law enforcement around these gardens. I know, um, you know, uh, one of my first forays um, into uh, this issue did occur in New Edinburgh, and this is one of the reasons why we're we're having this conversation. I'm just wondering if you could uh, describe. You know, we don't want to uh, out the neighbor <laughs> uh, or the property or his name, but I was wondering if you could describe uh, the challenge uh, that uh, um, uh, a certain New Edinburgh resident had, uh, which really set off this this conversation. Well, we yes, we have a neighbor. Um... Well, there are many such boulevard gardens already in New Edinburgh, as there are all over the city, including down the middle of Sussex. Like this is something that's being done on a big scale. But we had a neighbour um, with, with a small boulevard garden with like literally two plants in it. Um, and someone was going around making complaints against the boulevard gardens. I think they lodged about 15 complaints in New Edinburgh alone. And because of that one complainant, and we're talking about one small black-eyed Susan and one, there was one tomato plant, there was absolutely no obstruction of traffic or sight lines or anything. Uh, that person, because they complained, then it triggers a process where the bylaw officer has to come to the house and issue, um, issue a fine because technically it's illegal. And, you know, and just set up a whole waste of time and then the, the the resident did not want to pull out his garden because he couldn't see what damage it was doing so he had to get in touch with uh councillor king and councillor king visited <laughs> and you know all this is just taking up you know and i think councillor king got a stay of the ticket and he was allowed to keep his garden but the amount of time and energy and effort and waste of city resources um something that's very innocuous. Again, there's no hardscaping involved. And quite frankly, I'd be happy if people were ticketed for hardscaping. That's not what we're at. We're not advocating for that. If you, you know, you don't get to do that on the city land, but we're talking about very helpful, beautiful gardens. I mean, people in the neighborhood love them. And he put a, he got a petition going and he, I think he got about 200 signatures just of people walking by and so on. Um, so, you know, there was a lot, there's a lot of feeling in the community about this because it is one of the things that makes New Edinburgh a lovely place to live. Um, and it just seems wholly unfair that one complaint can trigger this. Whereas I see people with AstroTurf on their city land, plastic, killing the soil, completely allowed. 
So, um, you know, there's just, we've really got to sort of bring this up to the crisis that we're in um, and, and just kind of regulate it so that it's not causing harm to snow plows and, and not creating projectile missiles with rocks, but actually get, you know, educate people and, and make this a norm that um, where people understand what the rules are. And then I think we can just have a more efficient use of city resources. Because it really, and also that, you know, there's people who have boulevard gardens that may not have the know-how to contact a councillor and then they're being fined. And um, I think, you know, it really is an equity issue as well. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor King. Any further questions uh, to the delegation? No, no, I just really do appreciate the uh, the work that you also uh, put in around uh, researching what other municipalities are doing that did inform uh, the motion. So we thank you for that. Thank, oh, thank you, you. And th thank you for the delegation. And you probably noticed all the councillors' heads doing this because speeding is the number, number one I complaint in offices. <laughs> And uh, the, the number two is neighbor wars. Uh, I think I'll start a TLC uh, show about that for councillors, neighbor wars. But anyway, all I have to say, uh, thank you for your delegation today. Uh, next up, uh, and I'm getting some coaching from one of my colleagues. Uh, is it is it Brioni? Am I pronouncing that correct? It's Bryony, like Brian with an E sound at the end. It's Excellent. We, we were close. We we're in the ballpark. Awesome. <laughs> oh, you got five minutes. The floor is yours. Perfect, thank you very much. So hello everyone, my name is Bryony Wharf and I'm representing a local environmental group in Ottawa called Ottawa South Eco Action Network. We work with neighbours in River Ward, Alta Vista Ward and Gloucester Southgate Ward to improve our local environment and make our city more sustainable. Municipal councils have a huge role to play in mitigating the effects of climate change and improving the equity of access to green spaces. And because of this, we fully support this motion by Councillor Dudas to allow planting on the front yard and boulevard portions of the city's right of way. This motion could be a very simple but impactful step towards making our city more resilient to the effects of climate change. As the previous delegate Raywin mentioned, Ottawa has bold targets in order to meet our municipal climate change objectives, as well as its own climate change master plan and allowing residents to create gardens on the boulevards adjacent to their homes and the, the entirety of their front yards is an easy and effective way to get closer to achieving those goals. As mentioned by Raywin, cities across Canada are utilizing their public green spaces and are having positive results. Ottawa will not be the first city to implement the opportunity of boulevard gardening and neither will it be the last, but it has the opportunity here today to become a leader in beautifying green spaces that for too long have been left out in the fight against climate change. Within our three wards, we know of many residents who are concerned about climate change, the loss of biodiversity, the decline of insects and pollinators, and recent reports show that Canada is warming twice as fast as other places, and the simple change in bylaw could help to decrease urban temperatures. By amending the city's bylaws to a now naturalization on the city's right of way, the city will be taking clear action on all of these issues and will be providing its own residents tangible actions that they can take to be part of climate solutions, which would not only empower citizens and help combat climate anxiety, but also reduce the work that the city will need to do. The people of Ottawa want to be part of this change happening across the nation, and this opportunity will allow us to do that. My group is fully aware of the climate biodiversity crisis we are in, and we received funding from the City of Ottawa itself to run a program helping residents in Ottawa South to create pollinator patches in their yards. We would be very excited to be able to say in our bylaw presentation to the participants of the program that the green space at the front of their property is now available for planting for pollinators. And when we imagine the thought of these long connected pollinator corridors that could result from this motion, we are filled with hope. A benefit of this motion would be to make soft scaping accessible to everyone, which we hope would decrease the bureaucratic, the bureaucratic load associated with bylaw complaints. Some communities do not have much green space other than boulevards, and so the planting of gardens could be a step towards improving current in inequitable access to green space in our city. During the isolation of COVID-19, boulevards were my main source of green space. And I know my mental health would have been greatly impacted by the sight of colorful flowers, pollinators, and a sense of community and pride in my neighborhood from boulevard gardening. The use of softscaping in the city's right of way can be easily managed to ensure that the safety issues are addressed and the city maintenance can be performed without hindrance. 
the city already knows how to inform participants of safety and maintenance issues on the right of way via their adopt a road and beautification program. And as well, there are many great examples of bylaws in Ontario cities that the city could reference. So we're confident in the city's ability to create a well-worded bylaw to educate residents on softscaping so as to avoid hazards and issues. This bylaw amendment has a great potential to help with the education of naturalization by focusing on native plants that are salt and drought resilient. And as mentioned by Rayrin, improve water retention, provide carbon sequestration, reduce the need of maintenance by fossil fuel machines and create habitats, food sources and places for pollinators to raise their young. When Ocean thinks of the immediate and long lasting impacts the simple change could make, especially as the city works towards making Ottawa more walkable, we are excited and hopeful. I hope the committee can also see the mutual benefits this could have for Ottawa's residents and our planet. Thank you for your time to speak and, and uh, for your time. Terrific delegation. Thank you very much for uh, coming out today. Uh, I'm seeing no questions. Uh, thank you again for coming out. And at this point, we'll turn the floor over to questions to staff uh, on the board. Oh, well, we got a few. Oh, just hopping around there. Uh, first off, it's Councillor King, then Deans, then Kavanaugh. Uh, thank you, Chair. And I was just uh, wondering if staff could briefly confirm that there is a current uh, informal process to evaluate requests and support residents who are interested in right of way naturalization and, and beautification. Obviously, we have a, a motion uh, here before this committee that would deal uh, with uh, more of a long term review and analysis for uh, a, a substantive policy. But I'm just wondering in the interim, uh, is there an informal process to evaluate uh, such requests? Good morning, uh, Chair. It's Corey Curry here from right away. Um, yes, Councillor, uh, there are a variety of ways that these come in right now. Some on our city lands, our city parks, typically done through our real estate office, and some through uh, through my office in the right of way for uh, for right of way lands. Um, coming out of the conversation that we've we've heard, particularly over the last few months related to this uh, this topic, we're going to be assembling uh, for councillors and for residents an interim. Uh, contact list and process while staff endeavor to uh, to undertake the uh, motion should that be the will of council. I appreciate that because it's obviously uh, a benefit if councillors' offices uh, can uh, respond uh, appropriately and quickly to all queries. Uh, so that type of uh, toolkit for councillors would be uh, definitely appreciated. I was also uh, wondering, uh, since uh, the motion stipulates that staff will return this uh, report in 2023, 20, uh, uh, given that a few months can make a large difference when it comes to gardening activities, are staff able to aim for uh, Q1 or early Q2 next year uh, to support a full growing season um, in uh, terms of uh, seeing that this might uh, reduce uh, the necessary steps on councillors offices, residents and, and staff uh, throughout the spring and summer. So Chair, uh, staff's intention is to begin work on this uh, review, should it be the will of council later this year, in time to bring it forward to the new council early in 2023. Of course, when it's brought forward in 2023, we'll be subject to the legislative agenda and the priorities of the new council. But certainly it's understood uh, uh, the interest in having clarity, greater clarity ahead of next year's growing. I appreciate that answer and I appreciate uh, the uh, work uh, that uh, uh, city staff undertook uh, with myself as well as with Councillor Dudas and residents uh, on, on this uh, motion. So uh, very thankful and uh, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Deans. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chair, and uh, thank you, Court, for being here. Um, I mean, I think this is a really good idea. I've thought it's a really good idea for a long time, but I know that the city has looked at this in the past, and there are some challenges, both legal, I think safety challenges when it comes to planting some boulevards on you know, busy roadways, like imagine Hunt Club Road, how do you protect the safety of people that might be doing planting in that boulevard, how do you water? Uh, I just wonder if you could maybe sort of high level 
um, provides the members of the committee with the challenges that the city sees in moving forward with a plan like this. And also if you could address the issues with conflicts with the winter maintenance. Councillor, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll provide an answer to the best of my abilities, and I have colleagues from my I have colleagues online here from Public Works that may wish to add uh, further to my answer. So, certainly, uh, in your question and in your comments to the first delegation, uh, you raise a lot of good points. There are a lot of considerations that will go in developing a formal program for the City of Ottawa. Um, already, I can advise that the last few weeks, as we've reviewed the motion brought forward by Councillor Budas. We've had staff from our natural systems group, our bylaw group, our parks, maintenance and forestry, right away my group, uh, real estate, legal. Uh, it spans across the organization roads and parking services, of course. Uh, what's clear is the city's current regime um, is out of alignment with our environmental goals, the environmental goals that council has set for biodiversity, for climate change, uh, for stormwater management, for placemaking. Uh, so our two bylaws, our property standards bylaw and our use and care of roads bylaw are very conflicting to our other, other uh, council approved environmental goals. So what we'll be spending time on is looking at how we can resolve those conflicts, uh, what bylaw changes would need to be made, what resources would be required, uh, and then certainly the operational considerations. So uh, those for our roads and parking, our parks maintenance and uh, forestry staff but also access to fire hydrants um, in the right of way, uh, sight lines uh, for traffic, uh, invasive species, et cetera. So a uh, holistic review will be done, but that being said, as the delegations indicated, there's some good precedent in Ontario that we hope to, to use as, uh, as a template for Ottawa. Thank you, those are all my questions. Yeah, great questions for sure. Uh, and uh, forgive me, I did go, uh, I allowed Councillor King, even though he's not on committee, but since since this is a very small item, I'm just going to proceed with whoever had their hands up first, unless uh, members of the committee object to that. And I, I don't think so. We'd like you, Teresa. So, uh, Councillor Kavanaugh. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no, I'm very interested in this because I've always had people inquire about right of ways. Um, but I've also, um, I, I'm gonna ask the hard questions too, because I understand that there's a perspective from the city. Um, and that is in terms of um, when people take these on and then they uh, you know, move on or abandon um, or uh, there is no one to look after it. Um, so uh, do they sign a contract or do they make a commitment yearly um, when they take something on because it's not just the first year. So, so that's what I'm, I'm curious about. Um, I have seen an example of that. And I, I guess it's similar to community gardens or whatever, where you have to have a little management because things go year after year. I just wanna know what, what's in place in terms of that. So Chair, currently we undertake uh, the regulation of, of the community's use or residents use of the right of way through agreements, through permits, uh, with a range of options uh, leading up to um, removal of those assets or those, those undertakings in the right of way should they not be maintained. Um, you can think of arrangements that we have with BIAs and with community groups in your wards that, that we've undertaken over the past uh, to, to undertake that type of regulation. So those will be the, the um, if there's a consideration of looking at how to do this on a citywide scale, those will be the considerations that we undertake over the next year in terms of what tools we use to regulate versus what is voluntary. Uh, in terms of public education, we can provide residents to just go ahead and do things and be a good neighbor, be a good resident, be a good property owner uh, uh, versus what actually needs to be papered up. So that'll be part of the analysis. Sorry, my cat seems to have an opinion about this. Um, uh, uh, the, other, the other question I had, I just want a clarification. When we talk about uh, right-of-ways on, on properties, um, the assumption is that um, when it's uh, the right-of-way is a part of a property that people who are not the owners of that property um, do not have the uh, ability to uh, tent uh, that area. Um, it actually has come up, so I just wanted to ask how that is dealt with. Do you, do you follow what I'm saying? 
I think I, I do, Councillor. So um, maintenance of, of the right of way falls under the use and care of roads bylaw. And so certainly, um, you know, it's a conversation we have on a daily basis in, in my office as to um, public education on the fact that part of your of your front lawn is actually city property. And so uh, what this direction will do will, will be to, will be to propose amendments uh, after staff undertake their analysis to likely the use and care roads bylaw to delineate um, permissions that are allowed on city uh, owned right of way, whether it's in front of your house as part of what you see as your lawn or perhaps on a boulevard, uh, abutting a sidewalk on the uh, other side of your lawn or in, a, in immediate. And certainly there are traffic considerations, there are infrastructure considerations, there are transportation planning considerations. Uh, there are operational considerations for maintenance that are equally as important to um, our, uh, our environmental goals as an organization. So we'll do our best to balance those in and provide council with the best advice we can. What I'm saying is, can a neighbor um, go to uh, do something on somebody else's right of way? I'd have to take that away, counselor, and and uh, and discuss with my team and with legal. I don't I don't have an answer on the spot on that, but I can certainly dial that back to you. Uh, yeah, I, I've approached them about it, so I think they will have an answer. But um, I think it's important to hear because sometimes there's a temptation when it's on somebody else's right of way to go there, and then there's there's conflicts. So. Um, I would like to to have an answer. I think everybody needs that answer actually, um, but uh, it, it does happen. So I just wanted to find out what the, what the ruling is on that. I don't know if any, but nobody's here from legal, I guess here today. <laughs> no, no, uh, Councillor Kavanaugh, I'm sure they'll take that back. And uh, as councillors, I think we all wanna know people get upset when people park in, in front of each other's houses on public roadways. You can only imagine if suddenly you're planting all these different flowers in front of somebody else's home. So. Terrific question, and I'm sure they'll get back to you, uh, Court. I, I just think that's important to make that distinction when we're talking about landscaping rights of right of way. Um, that that uh, that uh, that answer come up as well. Absolutely, but, great question, uh, you. Councillor Kavanaugh. Councillor Hubley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my question. Uh, I have a couple of questions for staff. Um, I like the definition of the boulevard because uh, I often hear the center of the road, uh, the medians and that in the center of the road also being referred to as boulevards. So are we talking about enabling people going out into the middle of traffic to do gardening? Councillor, um, typically the boulevard, yeah, could be could be the, the median in a, in a local road or on an arterial road. Uh, it could also be the other side of a sidewalk. So if you have a property and a sidewalk and a little strip of grass, and then the road, that is also referred to the boulevard. So uh, you raise, I, I, I know where you're headed with your line of questioning here. You raise very good questions about uh, public safety um, um, for folks that may wish to attend to the, to the boulevard. And that will certainly be something that we consider uh, through this review is uh, what can be permitted, um, recognizing that these are actively uh, used roads. Okay, and so uh, thank you for that court. So in your recommendations, you could uh, perhaps provide some clear language on that so that if we're not encouraging people to go out into the middle of the road that we say that that area is exempt from this because the right of way, the, the piece in the front yard makes total sense what they wanna do. I've already seen a, a number of gardens already done in that area, which then leads to my next question is, what's the difference from what we're doing now? Because I've had community groups uh, uh, apply to do gardens in the public uh, areas of streets, like on a street corner and so on. And there's a process in place where uh, the biggest stumbling block is usually that they have to sign a, a contract that they'll be responsible for it for a set period of time. Councillor, good good question. I think uh, as I as I indicated earlier, the the, the regime around around uh, these gardens or these um, these beautification projects is a bit unclear, and it depends whether you're. A group or a resident is wanting to use the property right in front of their house, as Councillor Kavanaugh indicated, or perhaps somebody else's 
uh, what they what they see as as city property in front of someone else's house. Is it a city park? Is it a, is it city owned lands that are not a park? And there are different ways uh, that residents come in, whether it's through public works, whether it's through right of way, whether it's through our real estate group. Um, so right now we're what, and we've got of course the use and care bylaw uh, that uh, that really quite frankly um, prevents anyone on a voluntary basis from from uh, landscaping. Uh, their, uh, the right of way in front of their house. So we've got conflicting bylaws and we've got conflicting goals in some of our in some of our documents. Quite frankly, our bylaws have not kept up with council's goals with respect to the environment uh, as enunciated in the recent official plan and climate change plan. So this will be really reconciling all of all of that, uh, providing some business processes and some clarity for the public, and then and for our enforcement folks and for our operational folks. And getting to the bottom on some of those some of those issues that you've raised in terms of uh, public safety, uh, those of Councillor Kavanaugh um, doing something in front of someone else's property, what is and what isn't allowed, so that we can um, provide that clarity and hopefully um, also end some of the these these uh, civil matters between neighbors. Okay, and um, my last uh, two parts that I, I want to know about is. Um... And I think Councillor Dean's alluded to this. We all, I think, get the emails about repairs after the uh, winter maintenance, especially if you have a sidewalk in the right of way. Um, it tends to cut up the grass on both sides. Uh, so is there going to be language in here uh, to make sure that the taxpayer is not responsible for coming in to replant gardens? So, Councillor, haven't done, haven't we haven't completed the review yet? But certainly, the precedent that we have in our existing agreements is that where a community group or a resident can't honor uh, the agreement signed with the City of Ottawa, yes, remediation is done by the city and it is billed back to the signatory, uh, uh, whether it's on the tax roll or through uh, through, a, through a fine. Quite frankly, so we'll certainly look at at uh, the levers that we have for non-compliance and minimize the impact on the taxpayer, to use your words. Okay, so then the last question sort of related to that, and that is that it, the purpose of that right away is that's where a lot of the utilities are. So what happens like, you know, last year and this year, I've got Bell in my area digging up almost every street they come across. Uh, it, they have to do a basic uh, reinstatement of the yards. Are, are we going to now, um, uh, uh, will we per, uh, have some kind of language in this that they, because my concern here, Court, is our city staff that uh, tend to, you know, cut the grass and, and do repairs and stuff, they're not really gardeners, they're not trained for it, they, they, you know, this is going to involve uh, um, either hiring gardeners or else training up our staff to all be gardeners if we're going to uh, start uh, requiring them to do the repairs to the gardens. And the same thing would apply to the utilities. If we start making them uh, responsible to reinstate gardens, they're going to pass that cost on to um, the, the people that uh, their customers. And I think the city will get some pushback from that. So I, I just wanna make sure that we're gonna be clear on this and, and encourage people to uh, plant things uh, close to the sidewalks that uh, if they, they are damaged, it's just a matter of putting down some new seed. So, Councillor, you're raising very good uh, observations, and certainly part of this will be guidelines in terms of what is permitted to be planted, types of species, height for sight lines, and clarity over over uh, maintenance obligations. And you know, your, your point about utilities is a sound one in that um, obviously, this, the city has statutory obligations beyond the city of Ottawa to our utilities to have uh, access both on an emergency basis and on a maintenance basis for our, our right of ways. So we certainly will be underlining in whatever amendments that we make that, uh, that that obligation is paramount, that if there's a need to bring in a gas line or a data line or a, or a rehabilitation project, as you mentioned with Bell, et cetera, that, uh, that there will be access and that it won't be at the cost of the city of Ottawa. Um, I'm jumping ahead in terms of the analysis, the, the, the analysis that will be done, but certainly we've got statutory obligations to our telecommunications companies that we cannot override. 
Okay, uh, whatever you bring back, I'm just hoping that you, you uh, have language in there regarding this so we all have a good, clear understanding. I'm sorry, I am gonna ask you one more. One of the uh, delegations mentioned that the city now has a tree program for trees to be planted in the right of way. How's that work with the utility corridors? So Councillor, I'll start, I'll, I'll start the answer to this question then I think I'll ask one of my colleagues in public works to layer on. Um, certainly uh, they can speak to the city tree planting program much more ably than I can, but uh, the, sh the short answer I'll give you from the right of way perspective is that we always look for conflicts. Uh, we do locates and we ensure that there are, where, where a city tree is planted does not conflict with any infrastructure, both planned like a sidewalk or a cycling lane or, uh, or through our Jew information center that we have a good understanding of what's underground and so that those roots will eventually not conflict with, with what's installed. So then uh, you wouldn't get a tree. Uh, they would check the address first to make sure there's no utilities in the right of way and there's no uh, future plan of a sidewalk or whatever before they release the tree. I'm gonna ask my colleague, uh, Allison Downs in Public Works, who oversees park maintenance and forestry, just to layer on to my answer. Thanks. Thank you, Court. Um, I can't use my camera this morning, so I apologize. Can everybody hear me? Yes, absolutely. So I think, uh, Chair, uh, you're referring to the Trees and Trust program, and there is a number of criteria that is followed regarding that planting, and it relates to, is there enough space? Are there other trees or other obstacles? that um, at a minimum would have to be seven meters away? Are there overhead or underground utilities um, uh, in the way? Does the soil quality appear to be acceptable for tree growth? Are there anything else? Is there any other conflicting issues? That kind of thing. And of course, the request has to be made to, the, to us by the homeowner owner. And uh, we also consider conflicts with traffic safety requirements. Okay, so it's not a, a new program specific to trying to get trees planted in the right of place. No. It, it's, okay. It, it, yes, it's an existing uh, tree planting program. Thank you, Chair. Okay, and a very good one too, by the way, Allison. Uh, we've used a lot out here, so thank you. Okay, thank you, Chair. That was my questions. Great. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, uh, year, year of the Garden, Councillor Flurry. Year of the Garden, yes. <laughs> Uh, it is Tulip Fest starting, I believe, next weekend. So we're, we're certainly uh, proud, uh, proud of, of the work of our, our community. And, and I, I, I can only think of additional organizations such as Just Food, who do tremendous work in our community. Uh, Court, my, uh, my, my questions are, I guess, two, two fronts. So in principle, I, I agree with the effort and the need. Uh, having lived through many road reconstruction efforts and specifically in areas like Vanny where we're introducing sidewalks. I can imagine if we go ahead with, um, with a more elusive environment that it might create future conflicts if and when the city comes in to, uh, to do street renewal. So I, I wonder uh, if, if your team is considering um, those, those environments uh, and, and how, how best to notify residents, like maybe, maybe creating a gener generic notice on our, our website, the city's website relating to, you know, uh, garden at your own risk. And, and when we come, we're not, we're, we're not, we're certainly not losing the intent of creating those uh, much needed sidewalk spaces. So that's one, one aspect that I'm curious about is, um, that the, the protection of our future infrastructure needs, but also um, notification, like a bit of a, a warning um, that, that should be on, uh, that should be available to residents. Councillor, that's a great observation. And certainly our colleagues in transportation planning and infrastructure services have raised that with us at a preliminary basis that, that in whatever the city uh, decides to do, that there has to be, both notification that this is subject to uh, to review should there be an infrastructure project that comes along that dislodges uh, that that project, but also that there's reasonable notice so that certainly a, a resident or a community group doesn't undertake significant investment or have pride of what they've done. And then six months, one year later, the city comes in 
uh, unless you know unless it's unplanned, of course, and removes removes all that hard work for a, for a project. So that will be something that we consider as part of this review. Okay. Um, as as yeah, because I I mean we've seen council individual council we're all to blame of we we come to council and and amend some of our bylaws when we redo streets, particularly your driveways and stuff and curb cuts and which adds to the kind of the local challenges when people invest in their front yard. That's great. When we come along as a city, sometimes the goals aren't, aren't, nece aren't necessarily aligned, so it's difficult. Um, I, I thought Councillor Hubley's point around utilities was an interesting one. And we haven't really had a, an in-depth conversation at the city relating to the locates and locations of utilities. I, as you, you're aware, I've come across a number of situations where utility equipment has made its way into parks and impeded our ability in parks. and it, the same with hydro poles on private property or in that space. So it, are, are, is there an, an appetite or is there the space through the review to look at what are the utility implications? And um, if, if we can add some further guidelines to where, uh, where utility corridors should rest, because I think it's, it's that weird spot often where either the sidewalks impacted or the front yard of the resident and then we don't necessarily have all the authorities or tools once a utility service is in place. Chair, I'm going to uh, pass the mic over to Rob McLaughlin, our program manager of right away. Thanks, Corey. Uh, through the chair, sorry, we sent a bit of feedback there. Uh, Councillor, um, certainly as, as, as Court has mentioned in response to Councillor Hubley's question, we will be looking at this as part of the review. We'll be looking at the conflict potentials. We'll be looking at the expectations that will be placed in relation to um, making sure that if there is beautification done, it's with a full recognition of what is there currently and making sure that uh, all potential conflicts are flushed out. Um, what, I, what I think I heard you say, and, and forgive me and, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that as part of this review, um, we won't necessarily be looking at utility placement in general. We'll look at where it intersects, of course, with what the intent of the motion is in terms of looking at um, right away beautification opportunities by residents and community groups. But we already, um, as Court mentioned, are subject to the statutory requirements of these utilities. And we already have a fairly robust process in place as part of our municipal consent to review where they go and to approve the alignments for these utilities within the right of way. Okay, and then maybe on a final question, um, we've seen uh, different legal environments for, you know, uh, laneways. I, I remember I go back to Peter Clark days when some of us were around and, and Peter Clark was really interested in those uh, laneways because there are a lot in Rideau Rockcliffe and, and some laneways around fencing and, and some people built structures and so on. And it, it got really complicated very quickly specifically on our legal authorities as to, you know, if that structure was in place prior to a particular year, then there's rights acquired and so on. Is that, are all of the legal environments relating to ensuring that we don't lose right of way or intentionally lose right of ways, uh, unintentionally lose uh, right of ways uh, as part of the review? Uh, I, I, I think that that would serve uh, future councils and decisions uh, well if, if that legal scan is completed. Sure, thank you, Councillor. Um, so certainly uh, we already have in place the council approved lanes policy that speaks to, to all of the matters in relation to, uh, to encroachments within, uh, within lanes and how those are dealt with. And it's not the intent of this review to, uh, to change any of that or make any recommendations. Um, and certainly through this review, the, the intent wouldn't necessarily be to give up right away space, but in, instead to look at how residents can, uh, can beautify within that given the city maintains the, uh, maintains the right of way ownership. Yeah, and Rob, I, I, I'm just going to clarify. I, I didn't mean to open the can of worms around laneways. That was not my. Uh, I was giving a, a, an example of that. I, I guess my. I would love to see through this a scan of legal impl implication at all levels, right? If if someone does invest on the, on what we'll call our front yard as a city, then if the plow comes and damages, are we are we responsible? Um, are there, if someone's been doing a garden for 30 years and the city comes in and says, no, you know what, that'll be a sidewalk. What are the legal environments? I, I think it would serve well, 
the future decision on this matter to have that legal scan ahead of time. Well, that's a that's a fair point, Councillor. We'll take that back as part of the review. And certainly, as Court has mentioned in uh, in his previous responses, part of this is not just around setting a policy and recommendations to Council, but looking at what the educational tools and the guidelines for residents would be as part of this overall exercise. Great. And then finally, just as a wrap up, uh, I'll be supporting the motion. I think it's great. I think we have to empower residents to do uh, beautify our city to 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 again um, invest in their our collective front yards. and But I do think it's important for us as council members to have the right diligence to protect uh, to protect the city assets for the greater good of, of, uh, of, the, of the city's network. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, I guess, Councillor Dudas and Councillor King for the motion. Excellent, thank you, Councillor Fleury. Vice Chair Lieber. Thank you very much. I'm just wondering if one of the potential outcomes here can simply be uh, direction to bylaw officers. We twist ourselves around oftentimes with these bylaws um, in an effort to solve what is uh, should be a fairly common sense problem. Uh, the problem with a lot of these issues is that you know we we don't exercise common sense. Uh, residents don't necessarily exercise common sense, and so we go down these paths of uh, really twisted bylaw reviews. I went through this with uh, little libraries. Uh, there's a number of little libraries that are on the city right of way, um, and I started going down a path of can we create a permit system for little libraries, and uh, you know it, it became fairly clear that that was going to create a lot of uh, bureaucracy and rules and red tape and bylaw largely uh, has chosen now simply to exercise discretion when they hear a complaint about a, uh, a little library. And, you know, as long as it's structurally sound, they leave it alone. My understanding of what this problem is, is that people have front lawns. They are allowed to put uh, pollinator gardens on them. We have exceptions in the, um, uh, the property standards bylaw that allows people to have something other than grass. And it sounds like they want to continue, you know, pollinators, uh, uh, pollinator friendly flowers out to the road. Um, surely this issue can be solved simply by having some clear direction from council that we want to allow that. Do we need to create an entire regime uh, around this? I, I guess that's my question is, uh, are we putting ourselves to a lot of red tape and bureaucracy to solve something that should just be solvable by the exercise of common sense? So Councillor, certainly we will move as expediently and and uh, with the with the least red tape and bureaucracy as possible for something like this. I, I'm familiar with Little Libraries Endeavor, and uh, I think you're absolutely right that a common sense solution was found that we we just got this done collectively as as staff working with our residents. This one I would argue is is far more complex in terms of its uh, not only its scale as citywide, uh, but also with with the questions that have been asked this morning about emergency access, maintenance, infrastructure, um, all of the various groups that will need to be involved within our own organization, uh, liability, civil issues between neighbors. Um, based on the preliminary scan we've done of other municipalities in Ontario, and as mentioned by the delegations, uh, in staff's view, this one needs a, a program as light to the touch as possible, but a program and a way that um, that really sets the sets everyone up for success from an operational point of view, but also uh, mitigates uh, neighbor to neighbor issues. Quite frankly, uh, that I don't think that we would find as much in a, in a little library scenario, if I'm going to use that analogy. So, uh, the commitment there is to do this as light as as uh, required, um, but to do it thoroughly to set it up for success. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure it's the, it's a great use of resources. I mean, this, if somebody wants to plant a bunch of bee balm, uh, at the edge of their lawn, uh, in order to attract bees, uh, and somebody complains that it's not grass, it seems to me that bylaws should be saying, we took a look at it and this is, you know, we're not, it's not in the public interest to, uh, to enforce this. Um, but I'll be very interested to see what you come back to us with. So, uh, good luck with the review. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair, very good points. And uh, I also look forward to the report. So uh, on item number two, um, 
moving sustainable care of our public spaces right of way front yard beautification uh, motion that's put forward is this item uh, carried Very right. good. Hey, thank you. Uh, we have no in camera items, uh, no notices of motion. We do have two inquiries. Uh, the first one is actually uh, mine, and I know some of my colleagues have questioned and scratched their heads. Uh, so, this inquiry, uh, I've worked with staff. They're going to do a lot of background research. And if I can get Chris to put that first inquiry up, just give him a second. Thank you very much, Chris. So in light of a number of media reports uh, shedding light on the red light cameras and automated speed enforcement fines being incurred by City of Ottawa staff in the course of their duties, I would like to ask legal staff and fleet services to one, contact the City of Toronto and understand how they attempt to recoup the costs of the fines from their employees that they incur tickets and the levels of success. Two, provide an overview of the legislation and regulations, including collective agreements, impacts that govern the impact on this process. Three, provide an overview of the disciplinary approach that is currently in place at the City of Ottawa to address the issue. And four, offer any improvements or best practices identified as part of this research that could be implemented by the city going forward to enhance safety and accountability. So I look forward to staff's response to that one for sure. And we have a second inquiry uh, from uh, Councillor Deans. And if I can get Chris to put that up on the screen. It's coming, Chair. Thank you. No worries. Mr. Councilor Chair. Deans, yeah, did you want to go ahead and just read it? If you want me just to go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Please do. Thank you. Okay. Um, the city's infrastructure is aging and many of our roads are in a state of disrepair. While there is limited funding for road resurfacing each year, it seems that our local roads are at the bottom of the list. However, in many communities and in particular in rural areas, the local road also serves as a sidewalk for pedestrians. In these cases, when the local road is deteriorating, it makes it very challenging for residents to move around their neighborhood, especially for residents with mobility issues or those who use a wheelchair. My question to staff is when accessibility concerns are identified on local roads, how does this factor into the city's prioritizations for repairs and resurfacing? Great. And thank you very much for that. Uh, so uh, on to the next item, other business. I'm just going to, Chris, you don't have to put it up. Don't worry. Uh, warning, 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 media, please uh, help us spread the, uh, the good word, I'll say. Uh, 8 p.m. Friday uh, until 6.30 a.m. Monday, if you live in the east end of the city or plan on driving to the east end of the city, please don't. Um, <laughs> they have to close the highway to take down the bus, existing bus bridge remaining components safely. And uh, it will create massive traffic impacts uh, in my community on Ogilvy Road and Councillor Dudas's on Innes Road that all feed the east end of the city. Uh, but I thought it was very important. I've been watching my east end colleagues push that message out very heavily, but we also have to remember there are people from the west that we do allow to come to the east on occasion, and uh, we want to make sure that they're well informed as well. Uh, so uh, that's my PSA of the day. Uh, our next meeting will take place Monday, the 30th of May, 2022. Uh, and it's adjournment. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming out today. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Tim. Have a great day. Thanks, Jeff. Cheers. Thanks, guys.